Hi there, this is Alvin, the CEO of Dr. Wealth. And today, let's talk about Tencent's latest 1Q 2022 results. And the share price have not been doing well today because it just tanked like uh, 8%, 7 to 8% when it opens, when the market opened. And let's dissect what's actually going on in this set of results that caused that drop. Disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not to be treated as financial advice and I may or may not have any position in the securities mentioned. So basically, it is just for education purposes and if you want to use any information that is presented in this video, it is your own responsibility. All right. So with that aside, let's talk about the results. It has been a very disappointing um, set of results when I first opened the document and the first thing that caught my mind was this big fat zero over here which means that after a year of operation the revenue is actually the same right the quarterly revenue uh, did not have much changes right? of course you can argue there's a slight positive return but it's almost if you run it off is zero percent and that's not the only thing right and then another problem that people will spot is that the profits actually halved 52% from a year ago. So more people will be concerned about this uh, drop in earnings than this zero revenue growth. But I see it the other way. It is the zero revenue growth that is a more serious problem rather than the earnings. Let me explain myself. So earnings is not a problem here because if we zoom in and break down the cost, um, likely if the revenue doesn't go up, what has resulted in a lower earnings is usually the rise in cost. So the two main culprit is this. The first is general administrative expenses. You can see uh, from uh, 18 billion last year, it became 26 billion dollars. Right? And then likewise, there is uh, a bigger loss in terms of the associated companies and joint ventures, they recorded losses, and it will be uh, carried over to 10 cents income statement as we can see from here so these are the two biggest culprit and these are non-cash right because under the general and administrative expenses one of the issue that caused these uh, expenses to go up is because of the share base compensation which is the stock options uh, giving equity to the employees and this is not it is not cash based right this is just a uh, paper loss when they issue these shares to the employees all right, so it's not a big concern. Yes, there is some headcount increase, which means salary has gone up, but we should see as positive sign that they are hiring, which means they are trying to expand the business. So this is not a big issue to me. And then the second thing is this uh, loss of uh, uh, amount of associates and joint ventures. And this is also a non-cash kind of a loss. So all in all, I don't think this earnings um, drop is a big thing. Okay, So we should zoom in into the revenue which has not been growing after a year. And if we compare quarter to quarter growth, that is where it is even more alarming. All right? You can see this is the latest quarter and it is the first decline in the past three years. And I believe it's probably stretched way, way below uh, before this uh, 21.9 right, that we see in this chart, which means that this is a very, uh, uh, how to say, this is a very, major milestone in a bad way that Tencent has achieved um, in this quarter one revenue decline right so this is a serious problem and let's look into why did this revenue drop uh, compared to quarter quarter the trend is broken totally broken okay and we don't know right how would Q2 fare and Q3 Q4 for the rest of the year okay if we continue to go down it will be a very a very disastrous kind of a situation for Tencent to come Many areas of concern because Tencent is a very big company. It has many, many different business segments. Although it's split into three segments, there were even more sub-segments to talk about. So let's run through what kind of business do they have. So the first is the value-added services, which include their social network, which is their WeChat as a main base, together with some of the subscription business that is uh, within itself, like those uh, uh, music, like those literature, um, even like videos. Right. So these are the subscription model that they make money from and then they have domestic games which means they sell the games in china as well as international games that are sold outside of china so these three sub segments form the value added services right which is more social in nature and then uh, number two is advertising 
right? Advertising can be in terms of uh, the, the media as well as the social uh, ad, right? So one is uh, uh, for bigger customer, one is for the, the smaller businesses where they can start to advertise and, and pay Tencent directly, almost like what Facebook advertising is all about. And then the third one is the FinTech and business services. So FinTech is the WeChat Pay uh, together with all the other financial services that's within the arm. And then the business services would be the uh, cloud service as well as our enterprise software subscription, right? So these are the three major pillars of the Tencent uh, uh, in structure, right? So let's look at how each of the sub segment, all the segments have been performing. Let's look at the first one, which is the value added services. After a year, it did not grow, right? It's just stable and quarter on quarter, it has grown 1%. So this is still not that bad, just that it's slow, right? And where did, uh, how about the sub segments within this segment? If we look at the social network, right? It didn't really go down. It still remains stable, right? So I think this is fine. Domestic game has saw an improvement, even though it's a year on year drop, but this quarter on quarter improvement is a very good sign, right? And later we'll go into more details why these numbers, uh, well, make sense of these numbers, right? How, how do they came about? And then for international games, this is the worrying one because the quarter on quarter actually dropped 20%, even though it did better from a year ago. Right. So again, there are some uh, possible reasons what caused this drop. Okay. Then let's look at the advertising. This is a bad area because whether is it year on year, whether is it quarter quarter, it has dropped double digit percentages. Right. And uh, whether it is from media or social, you can see the drop is is a uh, very persistent. Right. So this is an area that Tencent didn't do well in the last quarter. Right. Which we will also explain later why. And then the last one, which is fintech and business services. The year on year looks good, but you can see the quarter on quarter register a drop. So you can see quite, uh, uh, you either have very no, uh, re no change in results or you have declined in the revenue. <laughs> so that is why the overall results for Tencent is down rather than up. And that is uh, uh, generally a poor kind of uh, uh, confidence that people that they instill in a lot of investors and that's probably causing the sell down that's happening today as the time that i recorded this video and let's explain now what are the possible reasons that cause all these businesses to suffer the drop or at least didn't grow that much right what are the reasons and whether these problems are permanent or not such that you know investors can take some uh, reference and make a decision, right? If this is a permanent issue, well, we probably should sell it. If it is not a permanent issue, it's temporary, means this will be this will pass and the investment should do well going forward. So let's look, break down again, right? We start with the value added services. This is the stable one, right? No growth at all. And uh, we saw the domestic game recovery, okay? And I think that the recovery is likely due to the lockdowns as well as the new games that were being uh, published in China because you remember China uh, banned new games from being published for many many months right since 2021 and it was only recently that they uh, lifted this ban and Tencent being the largest game publisher in China would be the most impacted and that is why I, I, I think that created the domestic game quarter on quarter growth by 11% uh, and why lockdowns help because during lockdown more people will stay at home and they need entertainment and uh, they can't go out and that's where they uh, start to play more games and maybe spend more money right so that is a good sign for the domestic gaming side but in the international gaming side with the Tencent saw lower spending and uh, they they explain that it is slightly due to reopening because um, it's the opposite right because just now we talk about if it has a lockdown it's good for gaming uh, more people stay at home to play games but once the economy is open up people can start to go out and have more uh, real interaction time or even go to work the gaming hours drop and gaming spending will drop right so that is what they see and which means that if china get out of lockdown their games will get impacted okay so which means it is not necessarily always a very good news but i think that these are just a very transitory transitory kind of a situation uh, uh, games will still be played even people start to go to work and interact just the amount is different right but I would think that the more longer term impact is the regulation if the regulation is not as strict as before or you know if they're happy with uh, what they have uh, achieved uh, then I think that the long term growth for this domestic game section as uh, a segment will be a lot uh, rosier as compared to the past one year 
Next one, online advertising. This is what the one that we we say that is is one of the most disappointing, and uh, it is largely due to two things. One is the weak demand due to the lockdown, right? Because people are not going out. Okay, there's less places that they can spend, and businesses that does a lot of all these physical uh, stores, they will find that what's the point of advertising? Right? You can't even get them to spend money in the stores. So. Um, that that goes away, and then the second is the regulatory changes, right? For example, the crackdown on the education uh, tuition, private tuition for the past one plus years, right, has caused an impact because all these education company essentially can't really run their business anymore, and there is again no point spending more money on advertising, right? Same thing for real estate uh, industry because of all the uh, rep- regulatory clampdown to uh, as uh, together with the problems with Evergrande and a lot of other property developers and you know they want to cut spending and not spend more on advertising during this period so that is why Tencent uh, with this service actually get impacted okay so this might take some time to recover the way I see it right because you have two industry that are uh, uh, not really spending and you never know whether there are more that may be coming and unless the lockdown uh, get lifted Otherwise, this weak demand can continue on this online advertising space. The last one is fintech. It has dropped eleven percent quarter on quarter. Right, this is understandable because again, uh, WeChat Pay uh, is used very uh, dominantly in China, and you know, going to the not going to the stores means there will be reduced payments and uh, ten cent take a cut of all these uh, transactions. Right, so essentially, they don't make as much as before. Uh, the lockdowns so when lockdown get lifted their business for the fintech segment will improve okay so you can see there are different business segments some will benefit from lockdown some will not benefit from lockdown and then once they get lifted then you will exchange roles exchange places and until everything normalizes again right so there is a lot of all these transitionary uh, issues that tencent is facing too and um, even for the e-commerce right some people say that at home you can spend more right you don't need to go to the stores to spend but e-commerce uh, currently in china is affected by bottlenecks because of the lockdown right even the delivery guy can't go and send you the stuff and why you why you want to pay for it if you can't get it like the time that you want it to be so that is the whole issue that's affecting the fintech segment then the biggest problem is this right so will re- tencent remain a growth stock Okay, because there are investors who are growth investors. They only invest in growth stocks. If Tencent stop to become a growth stock, then what's the point of investing in it? That may spur more of these growth investors to sell Tencent. So we need to really figure out um, the, the most valuable thing about Tencent is its uh, ability to continue and uh, have a very big market share over a lot of different business segments and grow from there. Right? If they lose this power, Tencent is definitely going to be less valuable than what it is today. So let's look at the growth rate. Right? So usually uh, Tencent grows around uh, 20 plus percent. Right? So we can put them in like stage 4 kind of uh, uh, growth stage. Okay, They are considered mature growth but they are still growing pretty fast. Right? Double digit percentages growth, uh, yearly growth. Right, and now we talk about zero from a year ago, which means there is a possibility that Tencent may have really run out of space to grow, uh, 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 in China, right? It's because most of their business in China, except their international gaming, which is not a very big proportion. And if we talk about this stage five, then the growth rate will slow down to just close to the China's GDP growth, okay, which is not very fast, and the. Biggest issue is that the valuation between stage stage four and stage five are different, right? Stage four command a premium, stage five doesn't. So if if China a uh, China Tencent really stopped growing, this is the new growth rate zero to five percent or even less than ten percent, then Tencent's valuation will suffer a very huge decline. Right, so now that is the most critical but yet unsure point because we only saw one quarter of decline. Right, it is not a confirmed thing in future quarters, but it is the first warning that investors should take heed. Okay, so let's look at the current uh, metrics valuation metrics. Right, if you talk about PE ratio, uh, PE ratio currently is fourteen, and then the five year average is thirty seven. Okay, if it is in a stage four, if it's still in a stage four stage where it is a mature growth company, um, PE ratio of 14 is considered cheap. All right. If 
it is a stage 5 mature stable company, then PE14 is probably just fair. Alright, so I hope you can see the implication. Okay? When the growth slows down, your valuation will definitely be lower than compared to a growth stock. Okay? The rest of the numbers are similar, right? And even if you look at the forward earnings, um, uh, analysts don't seem to be very positive. Right? <laughs> it, it looks likely that the, the earnings are going to drop. Okay, and even for the growth rate that is experiencing now the slow growth, slower growth rate, the PEG ratio is not very high. All right, so that is the the figures over here, and uh, the biggest thing that we must take note is that is it transiting to become a mature stable company? All right, at this point in time, unfortunately, we won't know. We need to look at future quarters to have more data points to establish is it the case. All right, and conclusion. Uh, it is a surprising decline in revenue as, as we they have discussed in the past many years, uh, the quarter to quarter revenue has always been growing. So this is the first time that we saw a decline in revenue. There were a lot of reasons that explain it, which are valid reasons. We've seen regulations, we've seen lockdowns, we see reopening play that affect the international gaming revenue. Right? So all this different uh, scenario has caused Tencent to uh, get impacted in different business segments. Some help, some harm them. But overall, uh, it was a decline. Right? It actually harmed them more than it helped them. And the way I see it is these are temporary issues, right? Because regulations, uh, China has already promised that the regulation is going to end. And second thing about lockdown is also temporary. We are talking about Shanghai poss possibly of lifting the lockdown first. Uh, and then uh, reopening is an eventual thing. And once the reopening lasts long enough, the life will go back to normal. And then the growth can get more steady again, right? In the transition period you see a lot of all these spikes up and spike down which is normal right so this at this point in time looks temporary but as i said we need more future quarters data points and they must show improvement right they must lift up the entire year's uh, revenue growth otherwise we might have problem right because tencent might become a mature stock right we, we, we see it's more like a value stock than a growth stock so when that happens your growth investors will start to dump the stock and cause a lot of price pressure to go down and valuation is expected to go down as well Right, which means that uh, maybe if it become a value stock at three hundred plus dollars, which is trading right now, it might be just a fair price. It's not even undervalued. But if it's uh, still a growth stock, then it is considered undervalued because growth stock command a premium over value stocks. So I hope this video has given you a better idea what's going on in this uh, ten cents later quarter, and maybe you were wondering why the share price dropped uh, uh, quite substantially today right this is uh, these are the reasons and uh, it's still too early to tell we have to look at more quarters in the future and thanks for watching this video give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to this channel for more analysis of especially china stocks like this i'll see you again this is elvin bye